I think he's a sitting duck out in that outside line, even though he has Greg Biffle behind him in the 16 car. It's a swan on the side, not a duck. <laughs> but the result is the same. The result is from second to about. And settles back down in the second lane. Hey, Robbie Gordon's got a challenge on the inside. Here comes Jimmy Johnson Boy, with was, Jeff Gordon. I mean, he was right on that left rear quarter panel. But look at Dale Earnhardt Jr. He jumped to the high side once again with not a lot of help from anyone. Trying to get some help from Kenny Schrader, the 49. You see Michael Walter, the DEI teammate, trying to get the picture as well. And look who's together again on the bottom. Jimmy Johnson and Jeff Gordon have found each other once again. Jimmy Johnson's wanting to get to that red rear bumper right there. He remembers what happened about six laps ago. I, I just believe if any two cars can get up there and work together, they got a chance. And I think Tony Stewart just bounced off of Jeff Gordon. Yeah, well, he was trying to block him a little bit, and they got together and opened the door up for a 41 to go under. Well, Jeff Gordon wasn't quite quick enough to stay with Jimmy Johnson. Whoa, what was that? It flew off the... I saw something fly off of one of the cars. Yeah, there's, I just saw something fly off of somebody's car. Center caution for the ninth time today. See Jimmy Johnson in the 48 make a move to the bottom. Tony Stewart puts the block on him. Then Jeff Gordon in the 24. His teammate makes the move to the high side. Harvick says, "Excuse me, let me through the middle here in that 29 car." Carol, you can't help but get frustrated. Oh no, it, it, it just drives you crazy. You run up front all day long made the right moves all day long and you make one bad one here at the end and it can cost you 10 spots. NASCAR continues to remind these guys not to block. They've turned their radio down now though. But we only got 14 laps to go. This is as, this is about as intense as I've seen here in Ooh. a long time. Jeff, Jeff Burton gets into the back of Jeff Gordon. Just trying to help him down that straightaway. Jimmy Johnson though in the 48 car he's moving up to the high side. He gets pinched up. He can't get back in. Look at Jeff Gordon over the 24 car making a roll on the high side. See, all that blocking is what I was talking about in the opening. And Michael had to block Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson's got to block uh, Tony. Tony's got to, every, all that blocking is what causes his contact. These restarts don't seem to be very good for him. I think the biggest thing we've got with eight laps to go, we got three hungry guys up there that wants to get the victory lane first through third. As a matter of fact, I heard Junior tell uh, to, in the interview say, you know, I, sometimes I get a little relaxed on the restarts. Picked a bad time to relax if that's what happened. How about Casey Mears? Right there in second. His uncle's in this Hall of Fame. Four-time Indy winner Rick Mears. Mark Martin's still in contention. Gordon and Earnhardt side by side. Waltrip and Johnson behind them. Burton and McMurray behind them. But I think one of the hungriest guys is Mark Martin in that six car, just like Rusty Wallace was last week at Martinsville. Casey Mears running in second. His prior best finish here, 37. Now he's in a position to maybe win it. Yeah, and I don't think that, uh, you know, Harvick or Casey, either one, is going to give up very easily. I don't know. I think that uh, my pulse is coming. My pulse rate's coming up. I know that. And Darrell was six and a half laps to go. We've seen him do some pretty phenomenal things with less than two laps to go. But I just wonder, is that eight car, Dale Earnhardt Jr., too far back now? Still got him. Clear both of his clear high. Uh-oh, Harvick has no friends. Hey, no. Keep him coming. You got Jeff Gordon looking up the middle. You they made a run, Darrell. It only took him a half a lap. Oh, clear. man, I can't believe Junior dove down and left Michael hanging. Mm. Nine's on the bottom by himself, two wide behind the 29. And Michael Walker's backing up. He's back to about 10th spot. Yeah, well, he and Dale Junior are up on the outside together. I mean, we got 140,000 people here with five and a half laps to go. Nobody's sitting down. Whoa, Gordon, way to the bottom of the racetrack, and Jimmy Johnson comes right up the bumper of Dale Earnhardt Jr., and Gordon gets the lead. But can he keep it? No, he can't. And they car is just so strong, they can make a run on him, and obviously they can get to Oh, boy, that was almost a disaster. Yes, that looks like was. a Tony Stewart deal there. Five laps to go this time. Well, I got to say, this is the best race I've seen here in a long time. Darrell, Dale Earnhardt Jr., that eight car was sideways off turn four. I don't even think he ever got out of the drop. Couldn't. No, nope. lifters are losers here. That's it. Robbie Gordon in the mix now in fifth place, that bright orange singular car. Trying to get up with his team teammate, Kevin Harvick. But look at the outside line. Jamie McMurray in the 42 car. Michael Walker in the 15. He's fighting his way back up. Gordon inches ahead. Right there is where Junior is so strong. Sailing off into oh, the trouble. turn. One car around, and it's Brian Vickers. All right, the caution is out. 
and we are past the red flag lap. We are past the red flag lap. But remember, the field was frozen when the caution flag came out. And who at that moment was the leader? We'll have to go back and see. It would be obviously either Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the eight or Jeff Gordon in the 24. Even though NASCAR was sorted out, as you see these two guys behind the pace car, both of them want up there. They want behind. They want to be the first car behind that pace truck. We are at a point where the red flag would no longer be displayed to stop this race, sort things out. They do announce in the drivers, meaning the last lap on which that could happen, and we have passed that point. So either we gather the field up for a restart or they take a look at how they were running at the moment of caution to decide the finish. And, and when you are uh, challenging the call, you pull up beside the guy. So yeah. how many challenges do we have here? <laughs> Jeff Gordon will be the leader. And I think they just told the crowd that too. Scoreboard has not, not yet changed to reflect that, but that is what we're being told as of the moment of caution. Question B will be, can we get restarted? I think we're going to have a green, white, and checker. That's the way it's looking to me. Well, to do that, Darrell, they'd have to give one to go when they come past the start line, and we're not seeing that indication. There's Here's Gordon. Jeff Gordon leading, Harvick and Junior. Yeah, the car is sideways. And in NASCAR's determination at the moment of caution, that's when they decide who is the race leader. Not at the instant the car spins, but when the caution is issued by the NASCAR officials next door. So we pretty much know if we're going to get back racing, we have to get one to go this next time. Oh boy, that, that could be disastrous. And for that to happen, NASCAR needs to make sure that the track is clear and that the field is aligned. I don't know. Looks, 27 looks lead like cars. Uh, looks like the flagman is pretty well committed to the yellow flag. I don't see him going for the green. So we'll be on two to go this time. If they don't give a one to go, that would be it. Yeah, we come in, next time by, we're coming to the white. They'd have to give them one to go right now. No such signal. So again, let's show you what happens. Here are the leaders. There is the spin. You saw he was about a half a car length ahead of Dale Earnhardt Jr. when Brian Vickers was completely sideways. Yellow that's, light's already blinking. That's the kind of finishes we have here. We normally just have them down here at the start finish line. That was about, about a half a car length. <laughs> Look at that car. Sides all beat in on it. Tires got the Goodyear rubbed off of them. But that baby's going to victory circle. NASCAR instituted these rules more than half a season ago to freeze the field at the moment of caution to prevent racing back to the caution flag there had been a gentleman's agreement in place not to race back unless you were challenging the leader but as time went on and the pressure to win became great nascar found that the gentleman's agreement had pretty much dissolved and they needed to take action to ensure the safety of all the drivers on the racetrack especially one that might have spun and found himself sitting facing the field as they came racing back to the caution flag. So that's why the change was made in the interest of safety. And on balance, having had half a season to look at it, it was a good move. Yeah, and it's a rarity. It has been in the past for us to end these races like this. Uh, it happens occasionally. And uh, it's unfortunate that, uh, you know, we have to end the thing under caution, but it's for everybody's best interest. The last restart I remember here at Talladega that they gave with one lap to go ended up with Rusty Wallace upside down uh, while battling Dale Earnhardt for the lead on a one lap shootout. Jeff Gordon, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jimmy Johnson, Kevin Harvick, Robbie Gordon, five Chevrolets lead the Fords of Mark Martin and Jeff Burton, the Dodges of Casey Mears and Jamie McMurray and Bobby Labonte's Chevrolet. They will be the top 10 if they're able to complete this final lap 
at what looks like an agonizingly slow 70 miles per hour. White flag. I'm sure NASCAR will have a lot of sorting out to do because we have 27 cars on the lead lap figuring out who finished where. Uh, but we had a lot of Fords that were strong today. Mark Martin, Jeff Burton, a lot of Dodges. Casey Mears, Jamie McMurray. But right now, it's scoring sits. Chevrolets are the top five positions. Still, you got to give a call to Mark Martin and Burton. Jeff Burton particularly. I mean, that team has struggled. And uh, to get a top ten today, a seventh place finish. Uh, Michael fell all the way back to 12. Brendan gone. We didn't talk much about him today. He's up to 13th there at the finish. And Bobby Labonte, who we documented during the day, rode at the back. Right now, he's being scored in 10th position in that 18th car. Full sitter Ricky Rudd will end up uh, 16th or 17th here. Rookie, raw rookie Eric McClure in his first cup start will finish on the lead lap. And it will be Chevrolet's 11th straight Talladega victory. Spencer, who he got the 21st spot there in the four car. So... Pretty good day for Morgan McClure. Kyle Fetty up there in 24th. Schrader led the race there a little off. 23rd. I'd say that's one happy group right there. It's one of the fabricators who obviously plays a, a big role job, in uh, a restrictor plate race car, the body, the arrow side oh, of it. And of course, the, the, the person these cautions hurt the most was Tony Stewart in that 20 car. Nervous, my luck hasn't exactly lap. been perfect lately, so let's wait till I get that start finish line. Four, and four. Now, Tony Stewart will be 22nd, just could not gain any ground after having to make that. Three all over the place after just watching. That final stop. And there is, that's what NASCAR was concerned about. A lot of debris oh on the racetrack. Oh, my God. Probably all Budweiser can. However, that debris has come from that section of the grandstand. And that's a sad commentary. The fans, of course, they want to see a green flag finish. Safety of the drivers, though, is paramount. And Jeff Gordon will win the Aaron's 499 over Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jimmy Johnson, Kevin Harvick, and Robbie Gordon. Yes. Jeff Gordon, whose luck this season hasn't been what he wished for. He was lucky and good. Unbelievable, baby. Unbelievable. To the Nextel post-race show, NASCAR and Nextel, partners in speed here at Talladega. Fans uh, throwing debris out onto the track, upset with Jeff Gordon winning under the caution flag. And we'll hear from Jeff Gordon in just a moment. Let's rejoin Mike, Larry, and Daryl upstairs. Here's Chris. Earnhardt Jr. for the most, uh, Jeff Gordon came in tied with Dale Earnhardt Jr. for the most restrictor plate wins among active drivers with six. He now has seven after winning here. Let's get on to victory lane with Jeff and Matt Yoko. And the DEI Talladega streak ends at five as Jeff Gordon wins his first restrictor plate points paying race since this event back in the year 2000. A big win with a 24 guy. Despite how big to beat the DEI guy. Oh man, thank God somebody did. Uh, I don't want to do it that controversial. I tell you, uh, the Pepsi boys put it on the, the beer boys today, but um, I tell you what, uh, wow, what an amazing day. What a great race. Uh, this package that we have here is, is incredible. I, uh, I'm so happy that uh, NASCAR has picked what they have here and makes for great racing. And uh, it's about the safest thing as we could possibly have out there, too. But, man, I tell you what, it was hairy and just staying out of trouble. Got to thank DuPont, of course, Pepsi, uh, GMAC, Quaker State. Uh, who else do we have on here? Well, Papa Joe called from the hospital. He couldn't believe, he could not believe how exciting that win was. Well, we've been trying to get one for Papa Joe. and. I know Rick and uh, Papa Joe are watching back to hospital, boys. This one's for you, yes! Long time since you've won a plate race, Jeff. Long time since I've won a race, it seems like, but uh, I can't think of a better one to win. You know, uh, we run so darn good uh, on the restrictor plate tracks, but the DEI guys have just been been embarrassing us. And, uh, you know, I didn't know what was going to happen there. I mean, I, I knew I got ahead of them. 
you know, going into three. I couldn't pass them. I, I passed them, but I wouldn't pass them. Uh, you know, and uh, luckily right before I put the afterburner on, the caution must have come out. So uh, I'm, I'm going to go with NASCAR on that one. I'm not sure if everybody here agrees, but I certainly do. And there was a lot of debris out on that racetrack, too. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure if they were Pepsi cans or beer cans, but uh, there's a lot of aluminum out there on the track, that's for sure. So I did a burnout over all those cans, and man, I tell you what, it just feels great to get back to Victor Lane and, and to celebrate these guys right here. These, this is one awesome race team right here. Hendrick Motorsports, their whole, whole entire organization, Robbie Loomis, Brian Weitzel, it's a phenomenal day for us. Jeff Gordon scores his third career Talladega win. Well, in a real demonstration of class, Dale Earnhardt Jr. stopped at the 24 car, Jeff Gordon's car, and congratulated them on the win. And everybody else in the top five that has pushed by here, you've reached around to congratulate them. I want to congratulate my teammate for uh, winning the race. Thanks, Steve. Fifth Talladega win for Rick Hendrick, three for Jeff Gordon, Terry Labonte, and Ken Schrader have all won for Hendrick Motorsports. We would have loved to have seen a green flag finish and I've always been proud of this sports fans, but those folks in the grandstand, Daryl, I don't hold with that. Keep keep your stuff in the grandstand, no matter how you feel about it. Yeah, it's a it's a very dangerous situation throwing stuff out on the racetrack. But you know, Larry, yesterday we talked about the, the package, the Bush package. They got that right, and I think they got the Cup package right. This is a great race today. I mean, it really was. And you, you know, the fans, what I hate about that is they're taking it out by throwing stuff on the racetrack at guys in those race cars. Regardless whether we agree or disagree finish this thing under caution, it's not those guys' fault. It's the people NASCAR making the decisions. And like Jeff Hammond said, we have to live by it. Well, today, like you say, Darrell, there was no slow lane. There was no bad place to pit. There was no bad place to restart. Everybody who was in the race had a chance to win the race. That's the worst thing I've seen all day right there. Yep, I'm afraid so. Chris Myers. All right, thanks. Yeah, 160,000 fans, there's always going to be a, a few idiots. All right, thanks, guys. Chevy congratulates Jeff Gordon and his uh, 24 car, the Monte Carlo Chevrolet, on today's big win. This was the wreck. This is the winning moment out of the caution, of course. Brian Vickers spinning and Jeff Gordon passing. NASCAR saying, hey, you went ahead of Dale Earnhardt Jr. And Jeff Gordon, under caution, picks up the victory. And so in the last three weeks, last four races, actually, Jeff Gordon has gone from 13th all the way up to third in the points race. That was a terrific racing today. Uh, unfortunate uh, the way it ended. Uh, Jeff Gordon, a California guy, at least uh, by way of birth. Next week, he'll be back in the state of California. Join us Friday on speed on Bud Pole qualifying. Free Pacific Saturday. Time there racing from Fontana, California, where Kurt Busch, was the winner last year. Kurt Busch, one of those guys who was knocked out in the big one. We had an 11 car wreck that took out Rusty Wallace and Kurt Busch, among some other drivers. Matt Kenseth, last year's the points champ, knocked out early in the race. In the end, DEI, the streak stopped as Jeff Gordon, your winner from Talladega. For all of us here on the Fox crew, I'm Chris Myers. Thanks for being with us. Have a good week. We'll gather next weekend right here on Fox.